A very good morning to everyone. Sorry for the disturbance. So, as we say in the starting, let's crack CSIR UGC net together. So, the topic of today's class is umbrella species, generalized species, and specialized species. These are the topics of today's class. So, um, Before before beginning with the class, let us have a small introduction about an academy. An academy is one of the India's largest platform for the preparation of CSIR UGC net. A little about myself, I am your educator Farida Johar Bandukwala. I have a teaching experience of 10 years and I have qualified MP slit examination 2018. Presently, I am pursuing PhD from School of Biotechnology DAVV Indore. There is some technical issue going on, I don't know what. Just give me a second. A very good morning again. There was some serious uh, technical issue. So once again, we are back. So if you are opting for an academy, what all things you are going to get? You are going to get daily life classes. The whole syllabus is in very well structured manner. So that all the 13 units you can finish in a small span of time. You will be getting life tests and quizzes. And then you will have unlimited access towards all the videos and uh, tests uh, in that particular category. An academy tries to give as many as free classes as it can. These free classes it conducts on YouTube. And it conducts these free classes on special platform. This special platform is plus uh, is the platform which you can access through the app of Unacademy. That is Unacademy Learning App. Unacademy Learning App. You just need to download this app. And after downloading this app, you need to make your account and then you need to follow the educator. So in my case, you can search my name. Or you can search my profile by the name Farida Bandukwala and you will be directed towards my profile. You can follow the profile and you will have the access towards all the previously done special classes and forthcoming free classes. So this was about free classes. An academy has another platform as well that is plus subscription and this plus subscription is a paid platform. So this plus subscription you need to pay a little amount plus but plus subscription has got all the videos uh, related to the CSIR like all the 13 units are covered in a systematic manner and for all the upcoming exams it keeps on conducted, conducting short term courses then crash courses various programs keep, are keep on getting conducted on plus platform recently we have launched this uh, uh, gate and CSIR crash course so that this is also going on and all the units will be covered in the plus subscription so for this plus subscription what you need to do is you need to uh, pay a pocket friendly amount and recently a major discount is going on that is 54% for 12 months and 67% for 24 months so the prices are very less go and get this subscription and if you're using my referral code that is FB01 the prices are going to come down 
more so the for 12 months it is going to cost you 10,395 and for 24 months it is going to cost you 15,120 rupees so it is a very pocket friendly amount anyone can opt for it after that the subscription prices are going to increase from 31st of December so do not forget to uh, subscribe as soon as possible because very less time is left and if you are going for plus subscription it is not so that you will be able to watch only my videos by using my referral code that is FP01 but you will be able to watch all the videos of all the educators uh, under the single platform all the top educators and all the courses all the mock te test all the quizzes which is available in CSIR net category you will be able to get so this was about an academy a little introduction let us start with the topic of today that is umbrella species umbrella species so before beginning with the actual umbrella species i need to tell you that conservation is a very important thing while we are talking about wild plants and wild animals so if they are present in their natural environment, they need to be conserved. If they are present in their non-natural environment, then do they need to be conserved? The goal of conservation is to ensure that they exist in a longer time and for longer period they survive on this earth. So because of the negative effects of human activities, various wildlife animals, various unnecessary uh, crop rearing processes all these has actually uh, disturbed the environment so we have come across a term that is umbrella species right so the conservation of some of the species may require that some species around them should also be conserved so we come across the term umbrella species or umbrella effect what is the purpose of umbrella the purpose of umbrella is to save the people from rain so this umbrella covers can cover single or two people it is looking like elephant so umbrella can cover two individuals many a time three individuals they also get the support of a single umbrella if an umbrella is very very big then more than two three people they can also come under its shade so all these things are kind of umbrella effect right so this i'm just telling you that what is the reason behind the term umbrella species so umbrella species are those species which are actually selected for conserving the environment or conservation related decisions because the conservation and protection of these species indirectly is going to affect the conservation and protection of other species in their ecosystem like in yesterday's class we talked about sea otter and sea urchin right this thing we discussed in yesterday's class that there is a sea otter and sea urchin and this we read in keystone species so who is going to tell me that which one is the villain and which one is the hero in this case in case of sea otter and sea urchin who is going to tell me that which species is a keystone species sea otter or sea urchin because yesterday only we did i can see some of the students who are presently uh, seeing the class or uh, watching the class so are they going to tell me that which one is a villain and which one is the hero in this case so sea urchin is villain and sea otter is the hero sea otter is a keystone species so by saving or by having a enough number of sea otter the sea urchin cannot completely kill the kelp forest so this species a single species can actually save many species so that is the same concept which is used in umbrella species so umbrella species i'll just give you the literal de definition of umbrella species that they are the species they are the species that are selected that are selected for conservation related decisions 
because the conservation and protection the conservation and protection of these species indirectly affect conservation and protection of other species of other species right i hope you are understanding each and every point which we are saying that these are the species which are selected especially by us for conservation related decisions or activities so these are not the species which we need to actually conserve but by conserving these species we are able to conserve the other species right so umbrella species what all it is doing let us see that umbrella species help in selection of potential reserve location as well as determination of the composition of the reserve that which area can be actually uh, converted into a reserve area these all things are uh, work of umbrella species so umbrella species help in selection of potential reserve locations potential reserve locations and can determine composition of reserve that if we are going to make a certain area a reserve area so what all species species should be there so that now it, it can act as a complete unit so that not even a single species can be extinct so umbrella species they have a large area requirement for which the conservation of the species extends and protection to the other species sharing the same habitat umbrella species are actually the representative of other species in their habitat since they are known species and they also determine the area of conservation so umbrella species are representative they are representative of other species in their habitat right why because umbrella species are actually known species are uh, actually known species so the protection extends to other species by the presence of umbrella species and this effect is also called as umbrella effect this effect is known as umbrella effect right so if we are uh, saying umbrella effect we need to talk a little bit about umbrella effect also because uh, if question is not coming from umbrella species it might come from umbrella effect so umbrella effect uh, it is the conservation which is extended to other species within the umbrella species habitat and is an easier way of managing the ecological community so umbrella effect is easier way easier way of managing community So the concept of umbrella species has been utilized in creation of wildlife corridors with focal species chosen for their sustainability in the conservation process the umbrella effect is a degree of species impact on other surrounding species it is a degree effect which is extended other species
Umbrella species is a faster and less expensive means of conserving the other endangered species since it reduces the cost of, in, cost of investment in sampling and that is necessary for prioritizing an area for conservation. So it reduces the cost of investment in conserving other species. So this is umbrella effect. Now the second topic of today that is generalist and specialized species. So first of all generalist, generalist species. So a generalist species, which is a generalist species, that is a broader niche. A generalist species has broader niche to adapt to many environmental conditions. Broader niche so that it can adapt to broader environmental conditions broader environmental conditions so the species which can actually uh, live in a broader range of environments it is called as generalist species they do not have limited diet and are able to survive by using variety of resources their diet preference is not restricted their diet diet Preference is not restricted. Right, their diet preference is not restricted. And generalist species, they can be found in larger range of locations around the world as they are adaptable. Can be found at various locations on earth additionally they have a higher tolerance to various environmental changes high tolerance to environmental changes that is generalist species Right. Now, what is the key feature of generalist species is that they have a higher advantage of surviving in habitat that is changing. So, higher chances of survival in habitat that is changing. And they are able to survive because they have a large range of resources with, on which they can actually depend upon and which are able to make them adapt to wide range of environmental conditions and diet as well so that they have a higher range of survival. Now if you are saying generalist species so we should know at least an example of generalist species. So the example of generalist species. Uh, We'll write over here so that it sums up in a page. Examples of generalist species. It's raccoon. Example is raccoon. A raccoon has a broad niche because it can adapt to various environmental conditions. It has a broader niche, right? So you can find raccoon in your backyard local city dumpster or family trip across the world anywhere you can find them they are able to adapt to various changes they can found in the suburban or urban areas as well and their diet is according to the season if the plantation is changing in a particular season their diet also changes accordingly so they are having higher chances of survival uh, 
and they could eat the berries of human litter also depending on their environment so they have got so large range of their uh, feeding pattern that there is no chances that they would go uh, hungry or malnourished ever right so this was about generalist species now talking about specialist species specialist species now when we are saying generalist and then we are going to specialist the thing is like quite understandable that okay uh, generalist was able to feed on anything and they had broader range of their environment and everything but now when we are saying a special word that is a specialist species so obviously they will have narrower niche narrow niche and then they won't be able to adapt to various environmental changes sorry they will not be able to adapt to various environmental changes and they will have limited diet as well they will have limited diet on which they are going to depend upon and they cannot survive without their necessary diet they are not going to survive without their necessary di diet right because they are a specialist species we are giving them a special word that is a specialist species so they have a limited diet so they cannot survive in any environment so when we are saying that they cannot survive in any kind of ordinary environment so they are found in specific habitats because they need appropriate amount of food water sunlight and shelter so they are found in specific habitat specific habitat because of special needs of food water shelter and even sunlight so they cannot adapt to any kind of environment their range of tolerance is quite low range of tolerance is low that means they cannot adapt to any environment which is not suitable for them everything they need should be in balance or a specific amount or else a specialist population is going to decline right so key feature of a specialist species is that they are not able to survive uh, in any kind of environment which is changing right so they cannot uh, survive in changing habitats cannot survive cannot survive in changing habitats just uh, as compared to generalist species and why this is so this is due because they have a narrow niche with a limited range of resources very narrow niche they have right now what is the example of a specialist species what is the example the example of a specialist species uh, uh, species is panda panda they are not found all over the world they are not found all over the globe they are found in a specific environment pandas they need a certain diet and habitat in order to survive and pandas are mostly found in temperate broad leaf deciduous forest found in temperate broad leaf deciduous forest or tropical 
broadleaf evergreen forest or bamboo forest because of a specific diet they have the pandas they can survive of eating bamboo and other grasses but it cannot be found all over the world right so now we have seen specific specialist species and generalist species these two things we have seen now uh, what what we need uh, to see is uh, invasive species that is the next topic of today's class that is invasive species like this we will be covering flagship species we have done keystone species we have done uh, uh, one more species we have done in yesterday's class that is um, uh, indicator species and in today's class we are doing the remaining ones right so the remaining one that is invasive species invasive species right so what is this species invasive species invasive word is like not a very uh, dangerous word or it is not a threatening word but yet they are kind of threat to the environment. So invasive species, they may not sound very threatening, but these invaders, whether they are larger species or whether they are smaller species, they have devastating effect on the wildlife. So invasive species have has devastating, devastating effect on wildlife. So the invasive species can be large or small. It can be anything. So invasive species, they have got devastating effect. Now invasive species are among the leading threats to the natural wildlife. The natural wildlife is actually at a risk of the uh, extinction or uh, uh, getting over why because of the invasive species so it's a threat to the threat to native wildlife the wildlife of the local area is at a threat because of the invasive species so i'm not explaining you the meaning of the word invasive species so let us just discuss that also invasive species are non-native species non native species like if we are talking about a certain thing uh, okay like uh, talking about uh, blueberries or talking about goji berries or talking about kale these all things are not native to indian land these are not native to this place so these are non-native species though we consume this in the diet but what if they explode and they grow everywhere they would try to eradicate the other local grown trees and plants. So that's why they fall into the category of invasive species or non-native species. Whether they are big, whether they are small, they have a lot of devastating effect on the wildlife, right? So they are a threat to native wildlife. This is the thing. Now approximately 42% of threatened or endangered species are at a risk because of the at a risk of extinction due to the invasive species can you imagine this that 42 percent of threatened and endangered species are at risk of extinction because of the invasive species so can you imagine this thing that invasive species are a major threat for extinction? So invasive species, if you come across a question, invasive species uh, are a risk for the native species. So yes, they are actually uh, a threat to the native species, right? And the percentage is quite high, quite respectable. So it cannot be avoided right so human health and economies are also at risk because of the invasive species species so not only this human health human health and economies are also at risk due to invasive species the impact of uh, every time i do Page gets down. 
of the impact of invasive species on our natural ecosystem and economic cost billions and billions of rupees each and every year crores and crores of rupees every year so many of commercial agricultural and recreational activities depend on the healthy native ecosystem because of the healthy ecosystem uh, native ecosystem we are able to enjoy various wildlife reserves like uh, ranthambor or kanha or gir or jim corbett these all are the native ecosystems if these are disturbed it is going to be a potential threat to the environment as well as it is going to affect the economy as well localites they are actually getting their lots of uh, financial aid from these local ecosystems that is going to be eradicated because of the invasion of native uh, invasive species so if you are saying invasive species invasive species and for a very uh, simple uh, way we have also seen that they are called as non native species so what species what all species are going to fall in the category of invasive species what makes a species invasive this is also a question what makes a species invasive what makes a particular species invasive right this is the question so an invasive species can be any kind of living organism it can be plant it can be insect it can be fish it can be fungus it can be bacteria it can be seeds it can be eggs or it can be anything which is going to harm the environment and it will be called as invasive species so let us see what all things can come under the uh shed of invasive species can be any kind of living organism can be any kind of living organism living organism now or any kind of living organism if we are saying so what all kind of living organism it can be it can be amphibian it can be amphibian it can be plant it can be insect can be fish can be fungus it can be bacteria or it can be any seeds as well or it can be eggs as well that is not native to that ecosystem that is not native to an ecosystem and can cause harm and can cause harm this is the actual thing which comes under invasive species not only the whole living organism but seeds eggs fungus bacteria can also fall under the category of invasive species right so they can if they can cause harm to the environment to the economy or to human health they will be called as invasive for all things it can actually go, can affect then it will be under the category of invasive if it is affecting environment if it is affecting environment it is affecting economy or it is affecting human health health adversely affected so it will be called as invasive species the species that grow and reproduce quickly and spread aggressively with potential to harm and to cause harm they will be called as invasive species any species which can grow and reproduce quickly another uh, line that has been ad added over here is which can which can grow and reproduce quickly and aggressively and aggressively with potential to harm this we are saying since ever so they are called as invasive species so an invasive species does not have to come from another country most important thing it's not so that if it is coming from another country it will be invasive species so need not need not come from another 
country can be from the so for example lake trout this is a example lake trout lake trout are native to great lakes but so here we'll write native but they are invasive invasive for the yellowstone lake in wyoming because they are completely native with cutthroat trout for the habitat here it is going to fight with the cutthroat trout for its habitat so lake trout is going to fight with the cutthroat trout for its habitat so that why that is why it is not native to to the yellowstone lake but it is native to great lake right i hope you people are understanding so now how these species actually spread if you are saying that they are not native and uh, they can be potential harm and also how are they going to actually spread so spread of spread of invasive species how are they spread so invasive species they are primarily spread spread by primarily so what one can guess obviously primarily by human activities primarily by human activities often unintentionally they are spread out people and the goods we use travel around the world very quickly and they often carry uninvited species with them so human activities like traveling and other so ship can uh, carry the aquatic organism in their blast water with the small boats may carry them on their propellers so primarily by human activities in water by ship or boat because of their normal activities of the Uh, propelling of ship that is ballast water and in the propellers in the boat so these places they can be transported and insects can can go anywhere so insects can be transported through boats through shipping plat uh, uh, platets ships uh, water then shipping and then carrots those whole big a uh, wooden uh, carrots which we use those can also be a host for the insects which can be actually transported then some ornamental plants which are in high demand all over the world they can be transported from one place to another just for on ornamental purpose they have been taken and then they spread so some invasive species they are intentionally or accidentally released as pets even in the form of pets so such as burmese python burmese python are becoming big problem in everglades burmese python right so in addition to the average high temperature and changes in rain and snow pattern caused by the climatic change will actually enable some of the uh, invasive species such as garlic mustard then uh, purple loose drift to move into new areas because of the changing habitat so that is one of the reason and insect pest investigation will be more severe as the pests such as mountain pine beetle are able to take the advantage of drop red play plants so some of the they are able to spread because of the some of natural climatic changes the examples uh, which we discussed were actually natural climate changes so what are these climatic changes for example the garlic mustard the garlic mustard can actually go because of the climatic change then uh, insect pest invest infestation will be more severe to the pest such as the uh, mountain pine beetle mountain pine beetle so if uh, the normal pest infestation which we do in our house for uh, eradicating the normal bed bugs and everything they can actually uh, eradicate certain other species as well so 
and uh, they have to move to some other place or they can be transported or blown off to some other places now if we are saying uh, the example and we have come actually to example so let us discuss some more examples of these species so one is congo grass congo grass So, is there anyone who knows anything about Congo grass? So, Congo grass is a kind of Asian plant. It's a Asian plant, and this Asian plant it arrived in United States as seeds in packaging material. Seeds in packaging material, and it is now spreading throughout the southeast, spreading. spreading in southeast and because of their spread it is actually um, displacing the native plants that is the major problem so it provides no food value for the native wildlife and it has increased the threat to the wildlife as it burns hotter and faster than the na native grasses so congo grass the major example of the invasive species then the another example which we should see is feral pigs so these feral pigs will eat almost anything they can even eat the native birds native birds so it is posing the problem of this so they compete with the they compete with the native wildlife for food storage such as acorns and feral pigs they spread diseases such as brucellosis to the people and livestock and e coli from their feces was actually implicated in the e coli uh, contamination in the baby spinach in 2006 so feral pigs they are threat to the native birds they are threat to the humans because of major disease spread such as brucellosis brucellosis and e coli infection infection as well so feral pig is example of invasive species then water hyacinth is another example of the invasive species water hyacinth so water hyacinth is actually a beautiful aquatic plant and it was introduced in united states in uh, from south america from south america as an ornamental plant as an ornamental plant right and in wild it forms a dense mats and reducing the sunlight for the submerged plants and the aquatic or, uh, organisms so it is going to block the sunlight right and crowding out of the native aquatic plants will occur and clogging of the waterways occurs and intake pipes or outtake pipes from that particular water body they are blocked because of the water hyacinth so it was actually introduced as an ornamental plant but it is posing other many problems in that particular area right so these are some of the things and now uh, there are some of the examples which we are not going to discuss in detail but i want you to just see those examples that is european green crabs are example of invasive species then dutch elm disease dutch elm disease is another example then asian carp is another example asian carp then zebra mussels these are some of the examples of the invasive species right so like this we have covered almost all the things which are related to the topic that is umbrella species generalist species spellish is specialist species and invasive species we have done four species in today's class umbrella species are actually for conserving if we conserve umbrella species we are able to conserve lot many species which are actually dependent on them or they are getting the protection from umbrella species so um, uh, using umbrella species is a simpler easier cost effective way to conserve the uh, 
species which are actually on the verge of extinction generalist species they have a wide range of survival they can feed on anything then they can take shelter from anywhere so generalist species are a broader species which can survive anywhere they are found in a large places on the earth then specialist species they have narrower niche they have limited diet they cannot survive anywhere so one of the example that we have seen here is panda so panda it can survive in uh, temperate broadleaf deciduous forest and bamboo forest so tropical broadleaf evergreen forest these are the places where it can actually survive it cannot survive anywhere but it can survive here now lastly the topic was invasive species so invasive species they can be a big species or a small species which can devastate the wildlife human health or economy then it falls under the category of invasive species and it can be bacteria it can be fungus it can be fish it can be insect it can be plant it can be amphibian it can be seed or it can be eggs and it can grow very very fast and very very quickly and it displaces the local uh, species from their area uh, then we have seen the examples of invasive species or how they are sp spread through animal human activities through water pool bodies that is through ships through boats through insects which hide in the holes then they are maybe transported as ornamental plants or they are used as pet but then further they just explode in number and some of the natural climatic changes actually make them ad uh, acquire some other area now some of the examples which we have discussed that is congo grass we have discussed nicely we have seen feral pigs we have seen water hyacinth then european green crabs dutch and disease asian cartons zebra mussels these are some of the examples of invasive species like this we have done the uh, uh, invasive species also in detail and lastly and in the starting as we say let's crack csir ugc net together if you haven't subscribed our channel please subscribe our channel that is let's crack csir ugc net hit the bell icon for getting all the notifications of the upcoming videos in the channel and if you really like my video or you have gained something do not forget to give me a like and if you have any kind of query any kind of doubt or you want me to do any specific topic of ecology uh, because this month we are doing ecology so you can just write down over here i'll definitely take up your queries and i'll try to solve it and um, do not forget to use my referral code fp01 to get a 10 percent discount in the plus subscription recently a major discount is going on in the plus subscription and this discount is going to end soon and prices are going to increase very soon so the day to take the subscription is this day take your subscription make the most out of it qualify the examination and succeed in life thank you very much this is it for my class for today we will be meeting tomorrow again with some interesting topic of ecology and we'll be discussing it and in the evening we'll be talking about the syllabus of gate we'll be doing the gate crash course in the evening so be there for the evening class and come back tomorrow for a class in the category of crash course for csir ugc net life science 